CCP releases economic data, scholar predicts she's downfall as best case scenario. Viral video, man declares time to kill corrupt officials, I'll lead the way. Unexpected. The root cause of overcapacity and sluggish consumption is Financial crisis, Hunan cancels section-level public institutions Zhao Wei in trouble again Part of her shares frozen, involving 5 million yuan It's all covered in today's China Truths CCP releases economic data, scholar predicts she's downfall as best-case scenario. Despite China's dire economic situation, on April 16, the National Bureau of Statistics of China reported an unexpectedly high GDP growth of 5.3% for the first quarter, outpacing both the previous quarter's 5.2% and exceeding forecasts by Reuters, 4.6%, and Bloomberg, 4.7%. Netizens have sarcastically dubbed this as the new productivity of the Statistics Bureau. By coincidence, a report released on April 15 by Taiwan Chinese Economic Research Institute, commissioned by the Mainland Affairs Council, examined China's falsification of economic data. The report criticizes Chinese officials for routinely exaggerating and obscuring real data, complicating data collection by scattering information, and involving even the People's Bank in these deceptions. Notably, Beijing announced in January that falsifying statistics would be punishable under party discipline, leading officials to hide secondary data such as survey results and economic indices under the guise of national security. The report cautions that this opacity could deter foreign investment by increasing risk, leading multinationals to cut back on their Chinese investments significantly. It also suggests that the CCP's insistence on promoting an economically bright future could predispose its leadership to poor economic decision-making. Nevertheless, the disclosed statistics still fail to mask the dire state of China's economy. For instance, this March saw a mere 0.1% year-over-year increase in the CPI, with a 1% month-over-month decrease, the PPI dropped by 2.8% year-over-year, marking 18 months of decline, with a slight 0.1% decrease from the previous month. Analysts interpret these figures as signs of ongoing economic recession and contraction in both production and consumption. Adding to the discourse, as previously reported, Tsinghua University's retired professor Sun Liping highlighted at a recent public event that the era of mass consumption in China is largely over, marking a critical economic and consumer turning point. He noted the current consumer dilemma, the poor can't afford to, the middle class won't dare to, and the wealthy don't know what to consume, suggesting an impending downward trend in societal spending. In a February interview with the Clueless podcast, Professor Su Qingang from Stanford University discussed the economic constraints under China's authoritarian regime, where any potentially regime-threatening economic discourse is suppressed. He recounted the Great Famine, during which the exposure of famine conditions was criminally punishable, illustrating the regime's tight grip on information. This historical secrecy, he argued, could presage a return to similar economic suppression, potentially leading to rapid deterioration if a financial crisis were to occur. Furthermore, Professor Su also warned of impending risks of deflation due to overcapacity and lackluster domestic demand, but suggested a potential future shift to hyperinflation, posing severe risks to personal savings. He speculated that the best-case scenario for China could involve a political shake-up akin to the events following Mao's death in 1976, though he acknowledged this as unlikely. Viral China. video, man declares time to kill China. corrupt China. officials, I'll lead the way. Public frustration with the Chinese Communist Party is increasingly visible. In a video posted online on April 16, a man advocates for the execution of corrupt officials, proclaiming to all netizens and families across the nation, for those who have suffered under corrupt officials, now is the time to act against these corrupt officials and bureaucrats. Brother Ma's case from Ma Shushan, Shinshi County, has been resolved. I am Xi Jinping, openly accusing Sun Guangda, Ren Hai, and Jing Qingchen.
Rin Hai, who is part of the Market Supervision Administration in Qifeng, Inner Mongolia, seems to counteract wherever I file a complaint. The man identifies himself as Xi Jinping, a name that sounds strikingly similar to that of CCP leader Xi Jinping. He continues, The moment has come to eliminate corrupt officials and bureaucrats. Let the citizens rise up and purge these corrupt elements. I will lead by example. I, Xi Jinping, will be the first to act, and I am heading back to Chifeng City, Inner Mongolia tomorrow. My actions will astonish the entire country. The video quickly went viral. Viewers have left comments under the video such as, even if he's telling the truth, it's a challenging goal. Still, his boldness in openly calling for action against corruption, a rare sentiment in communist China, is commendable. Hero, I wish you success, and oppressed people, unite and fight against this corrupt regime. Others have suggested, he might consider waiting to see if the US reveals the real details of the assets held by about 300 top CCP officials overseas, which might alleviate the burden on him to act alone. Interestingly, descend extends beyond just corrupt officials to include property managers appointed by local CCP authorities in residential areas. On April 16, residents from two different communities in China protested against local authorities overreach. In Nanning, Guangxi, a video posted by the social media account yesterday captured residents of the Xinxia Jiayuan community clashing with property management personnel who, backed by local officials, tried to force entry into the community despite the residents' wish for self-governance. Similarly, in Huludio, Liaoning, residents protested the town government's failure to pay land acquisition compensation owed for 23 months. Hundreds of villagers from Dongdai He and Suezhong County resorted to blocking roads leading to Wanjia town government, demanding the long overdue payments. These increasing public protests and efforts to purge corrupt officials underscore the CCP's growing insecurity. Following the White Paper Revolution in 2022, the CCP was compelled to abandon its three-year-long dynamic zero-COVID policy. Just yesterday, the party's media outlets were heavily promoting national security and Xi Jinping's so-called comprehensive national security perspective. External analysts suggest this emphasis on national security is a response to Xi Jinping's anticipation of a regime collapse. The common people's defiant acts are now seen as a significant security challenge, unsettling the CCP further. Unexpected the root cause of overcapacity and sluggish consumption is. The Chinese economy is in a bind, grappling with plummeting incomes and surging prices that hit daily life hard. Attempts to spark consumer spending and jumpstart the economy are met with global skepticism, particularly as middle-class families brace for rougher times ahead by tightening their belts. Experts link consumer spending closely to the public's income-to-debt ratio. Interestingly, one lesser-known contributor to China's overcapacity and weak domestic demand traces back to an unexpected source. The South China Morning Post reports a grim financial outlook for mainland China's crucial middle class, accounting for 500 million people and driving consumer activity. Despite local efforts to boost spending, unfavorable income-debt ratios hinder middle-class spending. Heavy employment pressures result in income stagnation across professions, dampening household spending and leaving malls abandoned. High ongoing expenses, like mortgages and healthcare, make the middle class cautious about spending. A survey by financial writer Wu Xiaobo reveals growing frugality, with 43% of middle class families reporting decreased assets last year. 46.1% are conservative in their investments, and only 9.8% remain optimistic about financial prospects. Traditional investment favorites, like real estate and finance, lose appeal due to slower growth and higher risks. Meanwhile, electric vehicle sales face setbacks from industry overcapacity. Education is another financial strain, as middle-class families invest heavily in tutoring for their children. This chicken parenting approach places a significant burden on both children and parents due to high costs. 
A CCP National Financial and Development Laboratory report shows a record high national debt of 287.8% of GDP, with household debt nearing a critical International Monetary Fund IMF, limit. Mortgages and various consumer debts make up the largest portion of this debt. With household debt at critical levels and job and income insecurities persisting, government efforts to stimulate spending seem ineffective. Analysts believe consumers' real purchasing power is insufficient, as income growth doesn't match economic expansion, forcing many to save more for living costs and uncertain futures. Surprisingly, the root causes of China's industrial overcapacity and weak domestic demand, as well as the reluctance to spend, trace back to the CCP's one-child policy. A piece by Yi Fuxian, a Chinese population expert and senior researcher at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, featured in Voice of America, discusses how the one-child policy has resulted in parents saving more for their retirement, leading to reduced consumer spending and exacerbating overcapacity issues. Furthermore, the fallout from the U.S.-China trade war, which has decreased Chinese exports to the U.S., has compounded China's employment challenges, especially among the youth, and negatively impacted domestic demand. From 2018 to 2022, China's consumer spending as a percentage of its GDP averaged only 54.7 percent, significantly trailing the United States at 82.4 percent, the European Union at 73.5 percent, and even Vietnam, a country with a similar culture and system, at 65.5 percent. The proportion of household consumption in China's GDP was just 38.2%, also lower than the US's 68.1%, Vietnam's 56%, and the EU's 52.2%. Elevating this to the international norm of 50% to 60% could sufficiently bolster the domestic market to absorb the production surplus, eliminating the issue of overcapacity. He further analyzed that parental instinct drives spending on children, which in turn positively affects household consumption. However, the one-child policy has led to a significant decline in the population share of children aged 0 to 14, from 33% in 1982 to 13% in 2023. Given that disposable incomes in China account for only 43% of the GDP, considerably low by international standards, supporting even one child is challenging for most families. To improve birth rates, stimulate domestic demand, and enhance international relations, he advocates for increasing the proportion of disposable income relative to GDP to a normal range of 60% to 70%. Financial Crisis, Hunan Cancels Section-Level Public Institutions Amid grappling with a financial crisis, the CCP has instructed local governments to reduce spending. In response, Hunan Province has announced a plan to eliminate smaller, division-level public institutions to streamline operations, a move that has sparked considerable interest. In detail, a recent publication by the Hunan Provincial Organization Department highlights ongoing issues in these institutions, such as unclear roles, inefficiency, and general ineffectiveness. This has led to situations where employees are either underutilized or overwhelmed by excessive workloads. To address this, Hunan is planning to cut the workforce of its public institutions by at least 50%, though schools and hospitals will be exempt. The policy targets the dissolution of 137 smaller institutions that each have fewer than 16 staff members. Speaking to the Sound of Hope on the 16th, Xiao Duo, a U.S.-based commentator on Chinese issues, noted the vast number of people in China who rely on the public coffers, many of whom do so at great cost to the state. He questioned whether the CCP could continue to sustain such a burden, citing the unprecedented level of government bloat and corruption in China, a situation he described as unparalleled both historically and globally. Xiao also criticized the CCP's aggressive spending in its quest for global dominance, highlighting the party's willingness to engage in numerous disgraceful acts to fulfill its ambitions. The CCP is actively working to extend its ideological influence globally, investing heavily to bribe international officials and garner support from poorer nations with financial and material aid, funded directly from the national treasury. Notably, under Xi Jinping's leadership, China has forgiven tens of billions in international debts. 
discussing with NTD TV the CCP's fiscal priorities, Li Jianping, a former Beijing lawyer and current chair of the Federation for a Democratic China in Canada, indicating that while the CCP might reduce spending on government operations, education, healthcare, and other social services, it is expected to maintain or even increase its expenditure on internal stability and military efforts, which are deemed essential for the regime's security. Xiao Duo also highlighted the burdensome costs associated with maintaining internal stability, which exceed even military spending and significantly limit the potential for public welfare improvements. He argued that reallocating these funds to scientific research or social welfare could significantly enhance living standards and economic health in China. However, he criticized the CCP's focus on channeling resources into suppressing any opposition to its rule, questioning the sustainability of such financial strategies given the extensive amounts involved. Zhao Wei in trouble again. Part of her shares frozen, involving 5 million yuan. On April 16, China Fund News reported that Chinese actress Zhao Wei has once again seen her equity holdings frozen. According to Tianyanka, a portion of her shares in Hebao Entertainment Group Company, Limited, was frozen on April 11, amounting to 5 million yuan, near 691,000 US dollars, and slated to remain frozen until April 10, 2027. Zhao Wei has yet to publicly comment on the situation. Hebao Entertainment, established in January 2015, operates as a platform-oriented cultural communication enterprise specializing in integrated marketing, content dissemination, and the management, production, distribution, and investment of variety shows, TV dramas, and movies. The company has worked with over a hundred brands and produces between eight to ten high-quality variety shows annually, in addition to participating in hundreds of TV drama episodes. Zhao Wei's career in both the entertainment industry and business management has faced numerous challenges recently, and she has been specifically targeted by the Chinese Securities Regulatory Commission. In 2016, her company, Longway Media, which she controls with her husband, attempted a major acquisition of Wanjia Culture, now known as Sheng Yuan Culture, for 3.06 billion yuan, nearly 423 million US dollars, using only 60 million yuan, about 8.3 million US dollars, of personal funds and leveraging up to 51 times that amount. This move ultimately drew scrutiny from regulatory authorities. On April 11, 2018, Zhao Wei and her associates were fined and banned from the securities market for five years by the Chinese Securities Regulatory Commission due to their controversial business practices. Following a downturn in the capital market, Zhao Wei's business activities have contracted. Since 2017, she has not founded any new companies. In 2021, she experienced significant financial setbacks when the equity of five companies she was involved in was frozen over three days, totaling 16.726 million yuan, about 2.3 million US dollars. Additionally, in the same month, Zhao Wei exited her investment in Shanghai Yunfeng New Venture Equity Investment Center, stepping down as a shareholder. This firm's major backers include New Hope Investment Group and Shuyushu's giant investment company, LTD. In October 2021, Minqing Trust initiated legal proceedings against Zhao Wei, her husband Huang Yulong, and Shuyushu, chairman of Giant Network Group, over a dispute related to a guarantee contract. Zhao Wei's professional life continues to be troubled. By late August 2021, her social media influence and her film and television works were effectively censored, with searches for her work on major platforms returning no results or being blocked due to legal and policy reasons. Let us know your thoughts on today's topic by leaving a comment below. If you found this video helpful, please share it with a friend, it inspires us to continue creating more quality and reliable content. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more interesting insights from China Truths. Thanks for tuning in.